Hello, my name is Tobias Rikstad and I am here to talk to you today about DALA, a simple capability-based dynamic language for data race freedom. And this is joint work with Kiko Fernando Trias, Isaac Oscar Galliano, James Noble, Erin Greenwood Thaspen and Michael Homer. So let's let's dive in. I'll tell you about the starting points for this work. So our starting point is a dynamically typed object-based language with support for concurrency. And we're not yet ready to commit to a single model of concurrency, so we want to keep things open. We want to have a clean basic model with clear semantics and something that's a, a good fit for the core of the GRACE language that James and others have been working on uh, for quite some time. And our objectives here is to provide data race freedom for, let's say, subsets of interest, so parts of, of a program, and not entire programs, uh, in the sense of, of wanting to be able to take existing programs out there before the advent, let's say, of the DALA capabilities, um, and migrate them into being safe, but having these things coexist and being able to, to interact and sort of link with each other, if you will. But also, when we target the, the simplest possible system that we can build, we will also have to live with the fact that maybe there are things that we can't uh, express in, in ways that guarantee safety. And in that way, we can, if we just stay with a subset uh, for guaranteeing the safety, then we can use the, the unsafe parts of the code to build the, the scaffolding, the infrastructure of, of the rest of the system. And when I say simple, what do I mean? Oh, so I mean simplicity in terms of concepts, not too many concepts, not too, too complicated semantics for these concepts. It should be hopefully intuitive for a programmer to use, but also not just be sort of simple, uh, simple to define, but then leads to a lot of complexity once you try and use these concepts in practice. So it should be sort of simple to the core in that respect. The syntax should be simple and it shouldn't be so invasive. You shouldn't have to, to rewrite your code or rewire your brain to think in a different way to use the DALA capabilities. And in the long term, we would like to add gradual typing and lots more bells and whistles to this system. But this is our first step uh, in the DALA direction. So let's back up and, and talk briefly about what a data race is. Right? So, so a data race is two threads accessing a shared value without any synchronization of these accesses and at least one of the accesses is a write. So that means that the thread interleaving will control the, the meaning or the value in this shared, uh, in this shared place or, or what you get out of, of, of reading it. So rerunning your program, even with the same input, could give you a completely different outcome of this program. So this creates bugs that are hard to find, hard to reproduce, uh, hard to fix. Then there are, of course, other interesting things, uh, interesting properties um, to uh, preserve in, in, uh, or protect for, for concurrency safety. But we are starting with, with data races as a sort of fundamental property and then building other things on top of it, and I won't talk about that today. So, we've been down this road before, and I'm not just speaking of uh, some of the authors of this paper, but as a community designing data race free uh, languages, both coming from the sort of implicit safety and explicit safety angles, right? So there are untyped languages, Newspeak, Erlang, Ambient Talk, E, uh, that provide you with safety from the way these languages are structured. And then there are the statically typed for, uh, languages such as Rust, Encore, Pony, RefIm, that provide you with a lot of static reasoning power, uh, but for the cost of, of a lot of concepts that the programmer must maintain in the source code for the compiler to be able to reason about the safety of the various operations and not uh, reject the program conservatively. And 
there are lots and lots of ideas here and some of these languages use almost all of these ideas right? capabilities capability subtyping promotion recovery borrowing con conjunctions of capabilities disjunctions of capability deep copying far references uh, it can be sort of very uh, taxing for a programmer to juggle systems that contain uh, all of them and also proving that these systems are correct is certainly not uh, a walk in the park so what we're trying to do with the dollar system is to build essentially the the simplest thing that could possibly work so the the mvp capability system if you will that still uh, gives you data race freedom but without bringing in a lot of these guns and adding building up the the complexity so in dala every object is born with the capability that's set for life so if you want to construct an object you can just say here is my object and i want to use this uh, capability this is just borrowing or piggybacking on some existing grace uh, syntax and the capabilities they form a, a kind of a, a tower right that's a tower lying down for, for layout reasons uh, on a slide and you can only reference things that are to the left of yourself so you have behavioral restrictions you have structural restrictions stemming from these object capabilities all of which are dynamically enforced so if you have an immutable object you can read that object you can alias it you can transfer it but you can't write it if you have an isolated object you can read it write it transfer it but not alias it if you have a local object you can read write it and alias it but not transfer it and if you have an unsafe object then you can do uh, everything and strictly speaking the unsafe objects they aren't created with a capability that's basically just a, a way uh, to, to treat everything uniformly in this system but technically we have just the three capabilities immutable isolated and local or im iso and local as we uh, call them in in code and then on top of these behavioral restrictions we have structural restrictions that affect what kind of, of uh, data structures uh, you can build in your system so let's explore the structural restrictions so immutable objects they can only be constructed from other immutable objects and isolated objects they can be constructed from other isolated objects but also from immutable objects local objects can be constructed from locals isos and ims and unsafe objects can be constructed from any object that's uh, lying around so the further up we we are in this this tower the fewer number of different capabilities will we see and by enforcing this this restriction by having the, the this this uh, tower hierarchy and, and restricting what can reference what we can sort of carve out the three top levels uh, of the tower and say this is the safe heap and in this safe heap data races are not possible and outside of the safe heap in the unsafe heap they are possible but they can't propagate into the safe heap. So you will not observe a data race inside of the safe heap ever, right? And sort of this migratory path that I, that I talked about before uh, a couple of slides ago is about sort of turning a program which is all purple into a program that has as little purple as possible uh, in, its, uh, in its object structure. So let's explore what this means and how the DALA capabilities achieve this safety of the heap. Right? So if you have two threads, both referencing a shared immutable object, that's of course safe because if you try and write to a field of that immutable object, you'll get an exception right? because it's immutable, it can't be mutated. If you have ISOs, then we transfer them across references uh, or across variables so in this case if i if i stored x and y then x gets nullified as a side effect so i can't have x and y 
being references pointing to the same object across different threads. So by controlling the aliasing, we also control the possible sharing across threads. So you can't create that situation. Only one thread at a time can know about the existence of this object. And so you can't have a data race. If I have a local object, then the local object knows its owning thread. So even though I can have this reference X in thread one pointing to this local object, I can't dereference it. As soon as I do that, the dereferencing operation will figure out oh, I'm accessing this from outside of its owning thread. So I'm not allowed to do that. And again, we get an exception. So I will certainly, if I have errors in my program with respect to data races, I will see exceptions uh, in the DALA model, but I won't see a data race. And of course, whether I see the exception or not could vary uh, for, you know, with, with uh, thread interleavings, uh, for example, because we have these exceptions, uh, we have the ability to witness data races in the unsafe heap. Right, so we have the safe heap and we have the, the unsafe heap, right? So we talk about safe data versus unsafe data. And, and unsafe data is, is quite different from unsafe code, right? So unsafe data is data that can witness a data race. If we're accessing something here, then the code that's ac accessing this object can see the data race. But the data races of the unsafe data, they cannot propagate into the, the safe heap. Right? So in this case, I have an example. I have two threads, one and two, X and Y pointing to the same object beta. Right? And beta has a field F that's pointing to an ISO. So F is the only pointer to this ISO in the system. And of course, these two threads, they can witness the data race on F. But F is going to be destructively read. So when you access F, you'll have to nullify it because we have to, we have to protect this no aliasing property of the ISOs. So if both thread X and Y are trying to read, get this F resource at the same time, only one thread will succeed. So we will observe a, a race on the F, but we will provide, uh, protect the aliasing invariant of alpha and so alpha will still only be visible to one thread and will not suffer uh, a data race. And where do we go from here? Well, um, we want, of course, to do more experimentation and more iteration uh, to program in this system and to understand where it falls over and where the limitations are. We have, as I said, a prototype implementation. It's uh, in MOTH. And we would like to, to keep developing that and experimenting and writing more code. Where does the simplicity carry through? Where does it fall over? Uh, as I said, we're not, uh, we're not prepared to commit to a specific concurrency model yet. Maybe we don't need to. Maybe these unsafe objects can be used to write the um, uh, necessary infrastructure to support, let's say, uh, actors or some other uh, concurrency model, and then we don't have to, uh, to make such a commitment. We'd like to add flow typing to capture when an ISO is present, and also a gradual type system. So right now there's a lot uh, of dynamic checking going on, especially so because uh, we have an object-based uh, system. In the paper, you can read more about this. Uh, you can read more about our various uh, thoughts of, of designing for uh, safe concurrency. You can read about our dynamic gradual guarantee, a complete example uh, in the DALA uh, language and proof of soundness and more. And that's it for this talk. So thanks for listening and I'll take your questions. Thank you.